Today we welcome Musa B. Yosef, uh, the author of Son of Hamas, who has uh, returned to Israel after five years of not being here. Thank you for being with us. You've made some pretty bombastic comments. Um, you've called uh, Islam a religion of war. Is that part of the truth that you're speaking of? Islam itself, as ideology, as religion in general, is a religion of con conquest, uh, domination, taken over, and control. It is a religion of war. Now, how can we understand that? We understand it simply through uh, the behavior and the life of Muhammad that Muslims consider as the highest authority of their lives. The Islamic ideology that I witnessed for, and this is not the radical Islamic ideology, because I was uh, in many arguments with many Muslim denominations, and we know that there are common things that all of them agree on. Jihad is one of them. And if all Muslim denominations and colors believe that jihad by sword, killing by sword for the sake of Allah is justified, then we have a problem. From what I understand, actually making a film about Muhammad, can you tell us more about this film? The, uh, the idea came first when I was trying to have a conversation with my sister about solid facts uh, about the life of Muhammad. And my sister was uh, uh, arguing with a denial and I wanted to understand why she was denying what I was confronting her with. I love her and I was trying to help her see that this is not a good way for her life. She could not see that because Islam is not only a religion in her life. Islam is an identity to her. Now, living in this modern world and being convicted uh, with teachings of the seventh century caused lots of uh, problems in one person's life. And I lived that conflict. And I finally came over that conflict and I want to help my sister and the new generation to find a way out. People who get the perfect picture of Muhammad, those are the people who are considered most dangerous terrorists because they know that they have to follow the steps of their prophet of what exactly he did. This is the best encounter idea ever for all extremism, terrorism that came out of the, from this uh, region. I am coming from that background and I graduated from an Islamic Sharia law. I am familiar with the language of the Quran that most Muslims don't. Coming from a household that started somehow the Islamic Sunni revolution in the entire Middle East area. What we're seeing right now in Egypt, the Muslim Brotherhood, this is, uh, my father was from the early leaders of this movement that's happening right now. So it, Islam has been my project. And I've done lots of sacrifice for that project. With that said, I believe it's my responsibility because I sacrificed and I paid very high price for the cause of Islam and the cause of Muhammad that I have the right to question that journey and bring the truth of what I witnessed the good side and the bad side we're not trying to offend Muslims we're trying to bring the truth if this is a real nature why do you still identify with it please explain to us and if this uh, suicide bomber who's trying to kill many innocent people is motivated by that ideology, I would love to seed doubt in his head, at least to be able to question before he go and commit suicide, thinking that he's going to heaven, while he's not. He's just killing himself and innocent people. You've mentioned your sister. Are you in touch with any of your family and how are the ties there and how do they feel towards you? You know, what really breaks my heart the most is that all my brothers and sisters 
I raised them like my children because my father was gone most of his time fighting for the cause of Hamas. And as a young boy, I took responsibility for them. And it really breaks my, my heart that I cannot talk to them. They're like my children somehow. Actually, two of them at least used to call me Baba. They used to think that I was their father. Growing up thinking that I am the man of the house. My relationship actually to my siblings are much, much stronger than my father's relationship to them. And I ask myself, why can't I talk to those kids? You know, to them, to me, they're still my little brothers. I don't care. I don't know what's on their hearts. I know the way to their minds. But they cannot talk to me because simply uh, they can put themselves in a very awkward position with the society. If they did not disown me for real uh, in front of everybody, th they will tell people that they are partnering of what I'm doing. Do you think that you'll have any trouble finding uh, finances for the Muhammad Project? Because it's so controversial, obviously there is an issue with depicting Muhammad on screen. Do you think you're going to have trouble getting investors interested in the film? The only argument that Muslims will have is to put Muhammad as a picture on a camera. And what we're trying to convince Muslims with, that first of all, Muhammad never said, don't put me on a camera, because there was no camera around the days of Muhammad. So if Muhammad himself did not ask not to be put on a camera, and we, tr we are going to put him in a, in a way that is described in the most trusted Islamic books, then th where is the problem? I believe that the problem is a political problem. And the problem is that the religious authorities who control the entire Middle Eastern re region wants Muslims to stay living in ignorance. This is a very challenging project. And uh, so far we did not uh, ask uh, people for uh, uh, production uh, finances yet, but we have uh, development uh, or developing uh, money uh, which uh, uh, did not have a problem to find. Uh, we developed the screenplay which is a big uh, step because it required lots of research and we had to hire an Islamic secular uh, t for a long time to investigate every uh, uh, thing in the screenplay uh, t because the accuracy is very important in this project. My audience is the average Muslim. The religious person knows the truth, but they lie to themselves and lie to the rest of the world. The average person, the traditional Muslim, who was born this way, the nominal Muslim, I want him to see the picture that he did not see, because I want to challenge the religious authorities with those people, with their own people. It becomes an ideological conflict that will lead to uh, intellectual, maturity in the entire region that will build an amazing future. This is a very challenging project. But please come to us, talk to us, and we, let's put our effort together. If somebody with finances, somebody with a vision, somebody with idea, we already have the screenplay, let's unify our power to bring the truth as a free world. I'm not asking uh, Christians or Jews against uh, Muslims. I am uh, uh, asking and begging every free person in this world to bring a light on a region that has been uh, living in a world of isolation, many walls of isolation that Islam built over the years to protect itself. And today we have this powerful media and the new generation can watch and see and make a judgment they are looking for, for a difference in their life. They're looking for a better future. Let's help them. Through the movie Muhammad and through writing your book and coming out against Hamas and Islam, some people have called you very brave and courageous and other people have said you've signed your own fatwa. Are you scared for your life? First of all, uh, I live uh, in a free uh, country and uh, I choose to live free. I'm not going to go to hide. There is nothing to be afraid about. We're doing the right thing. And we do it with the power of the truth. Not the power of conviction, 
Not the power of uh, opinion or idea. The power of the truth and the truth alone. You're intimately acquainted with the mentality of Hamas. Um, so with regards to the mentality, perhaps less from a political perspective, do you ever think that there will be any sort of reconciliation between Fatah and Hamas? Fatah and Hamas killed in the past. They're killing each other right now and they will kill in the future. The only thing that you, you unite them is Israel. And this is like where people, you know, look at me and say this is a pro-Israeli when I answer something like this. Killing in the, in the Arab mentality and the human life, unfortunately, does not uh, worth a lot. And uh, this is another sad uh, reality. We, we keep spinning in uh, uh, endless cycle of violence. And I think this is the time for uh, Arabs start to understand the importance of freedom, the importance of human life, what makes us different than animals that we have the right to choose.